Today I'm going to show you how to create conditional statements inside your C Sharp scripts. And conditional statements is essentially a way for us to check if something is true or false. And if it is one of those, then we might want to do something specific inside our code. So we can essentially create different outcomes inside our code depending on what some code might say. This is also going to be our last example before we actually start doing a tiny project inside our Unity editor in order to actually do something, create something that actually looks like a game. Because I know some of you are sitting there thinking, oh, when do we get to actually create something inside Unity? I could continue just to like teach you C Sharp, but I think it's a good idea to give you a success feeling of having learned how to do something with all this stuff that we've learned throughout these lessons here. So next episode, we're going to do a small example. Today, however, we're going to talk about conditional statements and conditional statements is also something you're going to use quite frequently inside your programming. Um, so basically what you can see I have here is right now a player health and I also have my player health property as well as my start method down here at the bottom. So what I'll go ahead and do in order to properly show you what exactly a conditional statement is, is I'm going to duplicate my field and instead create a power a player, power, a player shield inside my conditions up here. I'm also gonna set it to 50. And then I'm going to create another property because I want to create a property for this shield as well so we can actually access it and change it and do all that. So I'll just copy paste it and create a player shield. And then of course we have to remember to include the shield inside our properties in here. So now we have another property for this shield and just so we can actually see everything, I'm going to collapse it. There we go, so we have the two properties here so you're not confused. Um, and what I'll do is I'll go down and create a method, which we talked about in the previous episode. So what I'll do is I'll create a integer type method, and I'm gonna call this one damage taken, just to give it some sort of name that makes sense to what we're about to do here. Um, I'm going to open it up, and inside of here, I am going to declare a variable. And yes, I did actually call this one a variable because when we create a container for data inside our class, we call that a field. But if I were to create a container inside one of my methods, we actually call that a variable, just like you might hear from other program languages if you have learned about other programming languages. If I were to create something that looks like a method inside a method, it's actually called a function. So variables and functions, essentially. What I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a variable. I'm gonna say this is a integer type variable. I'm gonna call it damage taken with a small, a small <laughs> starting letter. So this is a camel case situation. And this is something we do when it comes to just regular variables. So when it's not a property or, you know, like a field where you need to start with an underscore. And when it's just a variable inside a method, we just use camel case. I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the next line. Actually, I'm gonna go down a few lines and then I'm going to return, return damage taken, like so. So now we essentially have a method, but I actually want to check for something inside of here. You can actually see it gives me an error message because right now damage taken has no value assigned to it. We just declared it, but we haven't set it equal to something. So it's gonna give me an error message because we need to do that. So what I'll do is I'll start talking about conditional statements. Now, conditional statements is a way for us, like I said, to compare, and then depending on the condition, change the code into different paths, different um, branches. Like if you imagine a tree that has many different branches that goes out. So essentially in here, I can say if, parentheses, curly brackets. So now if the condition is true, it's going to run whatever code is inside the curly brackets here. However, if this is false and whatever condition I placed in there is not true, it is going to just continue without doing any of the code inside the curly brackets. But we can also do something called an else if statement, which means that if the first if statement is not true, then it's going to jump to the next one, which is called an else if. It's only the first one that we call if, and we can add as many else if statements afterwards. So I can continue like this and create many different uh, branches that might run into different code. But one thing that's important to note here is that as soon as it hits one of them that is actually true, 
it is going to stop. It's not going to run the rest of them. It's just going to stop at the one that's true and then run that particular branch of code. So going back a little bit, just to, so we just have one of them. Um, we also have something called an else statement. And this is essentially our, if none of these other conditions are true, then run this as a default. So if the if statement or the else if statement doesn't come back as true, then it's just going to run the else statement as a default, like no matter what, this is going to get run. So with that said, uh, let's actually go ahead and pass in some data. So I want to see how much damage did I actually take when I got hit as my player here. So I'm going to go inside my method. I'm going to pass in a integer and just call this one damage. And now with this example I'm creating here, I know people who already know how to program that there is a much more efficient way of calculating how much damage a player should take. Uh, but this is just an example to show you how to use, you know, conditions inside our code. So I'm going to take this damage that we pass into the method and I'm going to say, well, okay, if the damage is greater than Actually, let's say if it's lesser than, and you can use the lesser or greater than symbol that we have here, the shield that I created, so we have a player shield, which is right now 50, then I don't want to take damage because the damage that I receive is smaller than the shield that my player has, which means that the shield absorbed the damage. So I don't want my player to take any type of damage. So with that, I can go inside the if statement, and I can first of all actually go ahead and debug dot log, just so we can see the effect of it inside our Unity engine. And I can go ahead and say shield not destroyed, just so we know that the shield is still there and it's not been destroyed. Then I want to go below here because we do actually need to assign something to the damage taken. There shouldn't be any branches where you don't actually assign any sort of value to damage taken. Otherwise, it's going to give you an error message down here. And if that happens, then it can't return anything. So there should never ever be an instance where you can't assign a value to damage taken. Otherwise you get that error. So I'm going to copy it and say damage taken is equal to zero because we didn't receive any damage here, right? In the next example, I'm just going to copy paste. And in this one, I'm going to check if the damage is equal to the shield that we have. So I'm going to say, is the damage equal equal to the player shield? Now we can't just write equal whenever we want to check if they are equal because that would actually say the damage is equal to player shield, which doesn't make sense because we're trying to compare them. We're not setting damage equal to player shield, right? So we do need to create two equal signs. That is important. Um, this is going to check if these two are equal. So I can then go inside my debug.log down here and say shield was destroyed. Actually, I can just say shield destroyed. Boom. And in this case here, of course, we don't take any sort of damage because we received just enough damage for the shield to get destroyed, but not for us to actually take a hit. So in the next one down here, just gonna copy paste. This would actually mean that whatever is left over when it comes to any sort of condition here is what we're checking for down here. So this one is checking if the damage is smaller than my shield. This one is checking if it's equal to my shield, which means that this one down here is going to be checking if it's greater than my shield, which means that I do actually take damage. So down here, I'm going to say shield destroyed and damage taken. And then I'm also going to say the damage taken is not equal to zero, but it's equal to the damage minus my player shield because that will actually give me how much above the shield did I actually receive in damage. So with this, we now have an outcome for all of them and we don't receive an error message when it comes to down here. Now, some of you might be asking me, well, okay, why did I declare the variable up here and then return down here? Couldn't we just do this? Where we create the variable inside each condition and then return it at the end here, like so. And just do that for all of them. Yes, you can. But a rule of thumb when it comes to creating clean code is that you don't want to create duplicates inside your code, which means that this particular line of code would appear here, in here, and in here. Same thing for the return. It would appear here, here, and here. And we don't want that to happen. So we need to make sure that we don't duplicate our code constantly uh, to make sure it's clean code. So I declared it first without assigning anything to it. And then I assigned 
and then I return at the end here, just so we didn't have multiple instances of the same line of code. So now with this, I can actually go inside my private void start here, and I can say that I want to take this method and actually use it. And then I just simply want to go in and uh, create a number. So in this case here, if I were to say 30, and actually run this inside my Unity editor. You can actually go ahead and guess what it's going to say. In this case here, of course, because we don't receive enough damage for the shield to get destroyed, it says shield not destroyed down inside the console. If I were to go back inside my code, let's just clear it here, and instead add 50, which means that because my shield is set to 50, it is going to destroy the shield but not hurt my player. If I were to go inside my code here, or inside my, my editor, and play it, it says shield destroyed. Okay, so now we know that it has been destroyed. Um, I can also go in and say, let's go ahead and say 80, 800, <laughs> 80. Save it, go back inside my editor and play it. And then you'll see that it says shield destroyed and damage taken. So what I can actually do here is I can actually go inside my start and return how much damage I actually receive. Because remember that this down here returns an integer. This is a, the type of method that actually returns data. So it is going to return how much damage I actually took, which means that I can also go in and say, instead of just this, I can say console.log. Oh, I can actually see I wrote console.log, which is actually JavaScript. So let's actually change that to debug. That log. So we're in C sharp now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a string to this and say plus damage taken. So I'm going to say you took blah 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 in damage. So we know how much damage we actually took. So in this case here it says you took space and then I ended off my string and then if you want to add another data type to it you can use the plus symbol. So we're going to add a integer because this is going to return an integer, then plus another string. I actually need to create a space here for this to look properly. There we go. So if I were to go inside my console and actually play this again, we're going to get the shield was destroyed, but we're also going to say you took 30 in damage because that's what I took when I added in 80 inside my code. So now this is essentially how we can create if statements, well, if statements, I keep saying that. I've done so many cuts in this episode where I kept saying if statements instead of conditional statements. Um, conditional statements, this is how we create those. Um, but I do also want to show you something else when it comes to these conditional statements. For example, let's just go inside the if statement here just to, to have an example here. Um, another thing you can do, instead of just saying greater than, less than or equal to is you can also check if it's not equal to. So I'm going to say exclamation mark equal, which means that I'm right now asking if this is not equal to one another. Essentially the opposite of what this down here does. We can also go ahead and say if they're less than and equal or if it's greater than and equal. So we have all these different mathematic, you know, you've seen it in math class before, you know, lesser than, greater than, greater or equal, lesser than or equal, or not equal to each other. All these different assignment operators you can use inside your if statements, if statements, inside your conditional statements. We do also have something else that I do want to show you. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to lesser than. Now, in some cases, I might want to check if two conditions are true within the if statement that I have here. One way that I do see some people do it is to go inside and create another if statement and then check for another condition. For example, uh, let's just go ahead and delete what we have down here because I think it confuses. If I were to go ahead and copy what we have inside the first condition and paste into the second one, and in here I might want to check if they are equal to each other, and I then want to run this code inside if both these conditions are true. This is one way you can do it, but it's not really the most optimal way to do it. Instead, what you can do is instead of creating a extra if statement inside, you can actually go inside the first condition and say you want to check for and if this one is true. So in this example here, we're checking if both conditions are true. And if so, we want to run the code inside our condition. We can also check if one of them is true. So it doesn't have to specifically be both that's true, but just one of them is enough is we can use the pipe symbol. Now the pipe symbol means or, 
So is this condition true or is this condition is this condition true? And the pipe symbol is one of those type of symbols that a lot of people ask me in the comments, where can I find the pipe symbol on my keyboard? Um, I'm using a Nordic keyboard, which means that I have to hold down Alt GR and then press this button here that has this symbol on it. If you're using a different keyboard layout than Nordic, then you might want to Google it because it is called a pipe symbol. So just Google it and then you'll find out on your specific keyboard what to press. And you can string as many conditions back on back as you want. So you can do something like this where you check, like I'm just gonna give an example here, like so. You know, it, do it doesn't make sense with the conditions, but essentially I am checking if one of these are true and one of these are true. So there has to be at least one true on each side in order for this condition to be true because I'm, I have an and symbol in the middle here. Some people have a difficult time trying to figure out what exactly is a checking here. Uh, kind of imagine it as the and symbol being the one that splits the different conditions. So I would essentially put a parentheses here and a parentheses here because these two go together and then these in here go together in this sort of way. So this is this is how this is working when it comes to these conditions in here. Again, just to kind of show an example, uh, let's go ahead and go back. So with this, you essentially know how to do conditions inside your code. Conditions, by the way, can be used in here, inside a method. We can also use conditions directly inside our start method here if we wanted to. So we can just create them in here. That's no problem. Uh, we can also create them inside our update method, which updates every single frame inside our code. Every single frame inside our game is what I meant to say. So with this, we now know what we need to know in order to actually do a example in the next video where we're gonna talk a bit about how to actually do something inside our Unity editor. We're going to do something where we have two objects that can hit each other. And then when they hit each other, basically one object is gonna destroy the other object at some point. And it's essentially a way for us to take everything we've learned in these lessons so far and just sort of apply them to an actual practical example inside the Unity Editor. So you can kind of see and experience what exactly you've been doing up until now. Because I think having that feeling that you're actually working towards something and you can see that it's actually doing something inside the, the Unity game engine is something that really motivates people. So we're going to do that next episode. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Thank you.